more people could be encouraged to pursue simplicity and to pursue a minimalist lifestyle even though they may feel that they don't fit into this cookie cutter sort of ideal. Well, hey everyone, so glad you stopped by my channel for today's video. Welcome if you're new, my name is Natalie, and today we're gonna to be chatting about the ways I think I was a minimalist without even knowing it. So we're gonna be rewinding two, five, 10 years back to younger Natalie and the things that I was just naturally doing, the, the simplicity I was already pursuing, um, decisions I was making and just routines and ways of life and, and things that I was doing that now actually fit into a more of a minimalist sort of lifestyle. But back then, whenever I would hear the word minimalist, and I know many of you feel this way too, I would just cringe and think that it was this sort of list of do's and don'ts and this really restrictive sort of thing and that it was only really applicable to people who were already naturally tidy. And I was the opposite of that. I was, I've was i always been a pretty messy person. I, I can make messes really easily and very quickly. And I had this very limiting belief that because I was messy, I was not qualified to be a minimalist. Even though I was already valuing simplicity, I just, I didn't have the tools or the confidence or the know-how or the support to just fully pursue it. About a year and a half ago, I, I just, it was enough was enough and I was gonna pursue it. I was gonna declutter my house. My husband and I have gotten rid of over 80% of our stuff in that time and I have learned so, so much. And thinking back to my younger self and seeing the things that I was already doing just has really opened my eyes to the fact that more people could be encouraged to pursue simplicity and to pursue a minimalist lifestyle even though they may feel that they don't fit into this cookie cutter sort of ideal. The thing about minimalism is that there are no actual rules and there's no actual definition for it. So it can be whatever we choose for it to be for our own lives. And we are all so different, it has to be that way. That's why these dogmatic rules and things that you will hear in comments from people who consider themselves minimalist, oh, you can't be a minimalist if you do this or that, they, those have no place here. And that's not what you're gonna find here on my channel. I This is a total judgment-free zone. I'm all about encouraging you and equipping you to pursue a simplified life in your own life and have it look different from mine. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you're doing right now that fits into sort of what you think minimalism is. Again, there's no rules to minimalism, but I would love to know if there are things that like you hear me talk about in this video that are like, oh, I do that too. Or if you do something more or different than what I do, do you consider yourself a minimalist? Do you not? I would love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. I love chatting with you guys in the comments. Um, and with that, let's talk about this first thing. This is actually the inspiration for this whole video. This first thing that I started doing that I think was sort of my intro into minimalism and I didn't even know it. It was really popular on YouTube back five or six years ago to do a what's in my purse video. Do you guys remember those videos? So this is the first thing, this is at the top of my list as far as things that I already had or was doing that was more minimalistic and that is carrying a tiny purse. <laughs> Look at this thing, I mean this is like, this purse is so dinky and this you guys is the exact same purse that I held up and took a little tour through in that video golly, that was before my daughter was even born. So like five, six years ago. And um, I had actually been using this purse for a few years, even before I filmed that video. So this is just a little Michael Kors mini Selma. I don't even think they make these anymore. And typically I do have straps on it. Sometimes I'll just throw this like into our beach bag or whatever. I was watching that video and first of all, laughing at how old it was. <laughs> um, but also I was realizing like after I was hearing what I was saying in that video about my reasons for carrying a small purse, I was realizing that carrying a small purse was actually like my foray into the whole container concept, which I've talked about several times here on this channel. 
um, Dana K. White of the blog A Slob Comes Clean. She's also the author of Decluttering at the Speed of Life. Um, she coined this concept, like she gave this idea a name where you use a box, a bin, a container, a basket, a purse as the physical boundary for the amount of stuff that you can put in there. And in that video, I was talking about if I carried any bigger of a purse, it would just get full. So the bigger the purse, the more stuff I'm shoving in it, the more stuff gets thrown at the bottom that I forget about or gets gross in there. So if I just have a small purse and just carry the essentials with me, then I know that I have everything that I need and nothing that's excess and nothing that's just gonna ultimately turn into crumbs at the bottom of my purse. So I carry a lip balm, my EpiPen, because I'm deathly allergic to bees, my important cards, uh, like debit card and license, and then maybe just a couple of other things if it fits. And it, I've continued to carry a very tiny purse for years and years, and I have no reason to change that. So that was just the first thing that came to mind. One of the first things that I ever did to really like pursue a simplified and more minimalistic life. Okay, another way that I was more simplified, minimalist, was the fact that I didn't purchase new decor every year. Some minimalists, <laughs> dogmatic minimalists, would argue that having seasonal decor is actually a rule that you're not supposed to break as a minimalist. But again, <laughs> repeat after me, there are no rules. So one of the things I would do, you know, was just reuse the decor that I already had. So I would um, just bring out the same things for Christmas. I wouldn't buy a whole new set of ornaments or a whole new set of lights and nativity and stuff like that or throw pillows or, or things that I would put around my house. I really loved that when I was a kid, my mom would reuse the decor that we had. We would always look forward to going in and finding the things that we had seen since we were babies. There were some things that my mom had long before she started having kids that held so much sentimental value. And I felt like when I would make videos on YouTube that I was doing things a little bit differently than the other, um, you know, clean and decorate with me videos that you would see um, because there was a ton of new decor hauls and stuff like that going on. And I was just like, I personally, again, this is about me and like my own experience. I personally felt like it just, there was an element of that sentimentality and that specialness that just wasn't there when you were constantly buying new things and like turning over your supply not to mention like the eco factor of everything and and how wasteful that can sometimes be it depends on the circumstance of course and i am not against buying new things not at all but for me like the whole seasonal decor issue i loved as a kid being able to bring the same little fall decor out that my mom still has to this day that she sets out on her windowsill that her grandkids come over my kids they they look at these things and they're excited to see the little village people and and I am excited to be able to do that and yeah I build up my collection little by little but I'm not replacing my collection like turning it over every year so I think that is just one of those it, it might be a frugality concept but for me it's more of like a minimalism concept because yeah it does save money but it it also just fosters this really sentimental and sweet environment as a family and I honestly wouldn't have it any other way I would be content to not buy a single new piece of decor for this house ever. Also speaking of decor, another way I think that I was on the journey toward minimalism, toward like absolutely pursuing it, was the fact that I had a more neutral palette for the decor in my house and also for my own clothing. Um, people would comment um, or even like some family and friends would be like, oh, that's just a little boring just to have gray and white everywhere. I've always loved a neutral color palette, grays, uh, you know, tans, sandy colors for my clothing and for the decor in my house. And I just remember thinking like, yeah, this is actually kind of against what a lot of people do, but it just makes me feel so peaceful. And, and I remember thinking like when I would select Select, like neutral colors for my decor or my clothing that it would just give me this sense of like peace and just like this calming effect and I didn't 
really realize what I was experiencing. And now that it's kind of come full circle and I've, I've really experienced that range of peaceful feeling and like that total freedom of having less stuff in my house, I now really understand why I felt that way. It was just that whole visual clutter situation. So um, if you are looking to start on a minimal journey, I would definitely look around at the things that are causing visual clutter and, and see what you like and what you dislike and what about it makes you feel peaceful and what about it makes you feel chaotic. That might be a good place to start and start taking stuff out that just is that sort of chaotic um, and, and kind of crazy feeling that you get when you look around your space. Again, everyone's different. So what makes you feel chaotic might be a little bit different than what makes me feel chaotic, but traditionally minimalists kind of have a, a pretty neutral color palette. And um, again, there's no rules, but it was one of the ways that I was already pursuing simplicity before I was actually like, yes, I'm doing this. I was talking about it a little bit before, but one of the ways that I was um, being more simplistic in my life and already making steps toward that was um, implementing a lot of low or zero waste or like eco-friendly options just because I knew that in a lot of circumstances it is the right thing to do and it's the better option but it also saves money a lot of the time because you're not constantly buying like single use or like high waste products so I before I started decluttering and before I would you know pursue minimalism for myself and for my family I had things like reusable stasher like little bags from I get them from Grove now they're like the little silicone ziploc bags that are just reusable oh my gosh when I was a kid my mom would wash her Ziploc bags and reuse them she's super frugal and I've always loved that and I think that I have uh, just gained so much from watching her go through the extra work of like washing things out. If they had silicone zipper bags back then, I know my mom would have been all over that, but I'm so glad they have them now. Um, I also have used a menstrual cup for almost a decade now. I didn't start using a menstrual cup so that I would be more minimalist. I started using a menstrual cup because I thought that it would just be so much more simple for my period routine and for my life as a menstruating person. And I didn't do it necessarily to cut back on waste. That wasn't like my initial intention, but man, as I started using it and loving it and um, it now, you know, almost 10 years later, I've realized just how many period products I have not wasted and used. I've literally had like a handful of cups and <laughs> they're all still here. Like they haven't been tossed or thrown away. I still own them and they're good for like 10, 15 years. It's just crazy. So yeah, just implementing lower waste, zero waste options, aluminum straws, bamboo toothbrushes, along the same vein, doing like um, DIYing and repurposing and recycling the stuff. You guys have seen me over the years, you know, redo furniture and stuff around my house. Like before I'd go buy something new, I'd see if I could kind of rig something in my house to kind of look like that. I've made all the shelves in our house from scratch. I made shelves in my daughter's bedroom from the scrap wood of her uh, twin bed, her brother's old twin bed. And that's always just kind of been my MO is to just kind of do it myself, even though I'm not very crafty. Um, but it's, it's, I've always valued that rather than just like going and buying new stuff. But with DIYs can come a lot of extra unnecessary stuff into your house. Um, because something that I have learned as I've done DIY projects is that I can acquire a lot of stains and paint brushes and sponges and drop cloths and stuff. And rather than go back into my store, I'll just make an order and buy more. And then all of a sudden I have this pile of stuff that I'm never going to use. And it turns into this heap of clutter in my garage. And so, you know, you have to weigh it in your own life and see what works for you and your family and what's a realistic pursuit versus something that you think will just maybe help in the future that just takes up a bunch of space in your garage or your storage space. So yeah, it's going to be different for everybody. But one of the ways that I was 
already on the journey toward being more simplified or minimalistic was, or like more eco-friendly was reusing, repurposing, and then implementing those zero waste options already into my day to day. Even though I was surrounded by way too much stuff, 80% more stuff than I have right now, it was still something that was important to me. And, um, I think now that I'm farther along on that journey, it's, it's definitely served me well to have already have a little foundation of that sort of mindset. I'm realizing as I'm talking here, I really don't want to sound like I'm tooting my own horn. Like mm, I was eco-friendly before it was cool or <laughs> I, I thrift and DIY and you know, I'm, I'm really not trying to be pedantic here because it can, it can be really frustrating to hear people talk like that. I don't mean that. I, I still have so much to learn so much to learn and that actually excites me now before when I knew I had a lot to learn it overwhelmed me but now it's more like oh what else can I learn and I'm really excited to continue to like learn and broaden my my horizons so I, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there because I, I really don't want it to sound that way um, especially with this next point because again we're all different but one of the ways and one of like the minimalist concepts that I myself and Weston adhered to from day one was living debt free. And I know that not all of us are in the same place or can do this. And I know that there's a ton of like really judgmental material out there when it comes to living debt free. And I do not want to contribute to that at all. I'm just sharing my own story. And honestly, for us, living debt free has been so important for our family. Look, we're all in different stages and I am not here to say that credit cards are evil, not at all. In fact, Weston and I each have a credit card now. We, we were able to open one and we're at a point in our lives where it is safe for us to do so. But I've talked about this before, I think in a Q&A that Weston and I sat down and did very recently, um, we're both spenders. We get questions like, who's the spender of the relationship because one's the spender, one's the saver. No, we're both spenders and we both have addictive personalities. And so um, as we've matured, it's become safer for us to open credit and, and to buy things, um, but we pay it off immediately. Um, back in our early 20s, that would have been a pitfall for us. And there were some lessons that we just had to learn along the way before it was safer and, and wiser to open ourselves up to that at some point. So credit cards aren't evil. <laughs> They're a tool, but put that tool in the wrong hands and it can, it can definitely turn into something not so good. And 29 year old Natalie and Weston are different than 19 year old Natalie and Weston. And we've learned a lot of stuff along the way, but honestly staying out of debt, it was one of the best choices that we ever made. Here's another way that I think I was a minimalist before actually trying to be a minimalist. And that is, I really prioritized for buying multi-purpose items, whether that was a cleaning product, a appliance in my kitchen, like something that has multi-functions but only takes up a single amount of space, um, or like using my hair conditioner as my shaving cream because I didn't want multiple bottles of stuff in my shower. So um, we've always lived in a pretty small place. Our first home, it was like 875 square feet. It was dinky tiny. I think back then it was more about saving space than reducing clutter because we had such a small space and had no cabinet storage or a pantry or anything like that. So, so the reason why I bought multi-purpose items versus single purpose items was probably a different priority than what it would be for me today. Um, but it was still like an intro to that mindset and to being more minimalist. Okay. And this is the last one. And this is since becoming a mom from day one, whether it was because our budget was limited or we just didn't want a ton of things in the space to overwhelm us or overwhelm our kids. We have always been pretty simple as far as what we buy for our kids toys. So um, even though you'll see videos where I'm like decluttering closets and toy bins and stuff and it's like, oh my gosh, they have a crazy amount of toys. That's been contributed to us as well as other people or, you know, free stuff that we'd find or garage sales and stuff like that. But when it came to the times where we were most intentional, like putting together a list of stuff to get our kids for Christmas or birthdays or whatever, 
we were always trying to be as practical while still being fun um, and as thoughtful as pro- as possible so that we weren't just shoving a bunch of toys into our kids' rooms and like overwhelming them. And we could see from a very young age, I mean, even when our boys were tiny babies, that too much stuff overwhelmed them. And so um, that was one of the biggest ways that minimalism really started to become this thing that I I was really wanting to learn more about because I already saw the benefits of having a more minimalistic approach to kids' toys and to their wardrobes even and realizing that that could be something that would benefit more areas of my life. I've shared several videos over the last few years of what I got my kids for Christmas, what I got my kids for Easter, what's in their Easter baskets, what I got my daughter for her birthday, you know, videos like that. And even back when I had 80% more stuff in my house, I was still, um, I still saw the value of being really intentional and more simplified when it comes to their toys. That has evolved over this last year and a half especially, and we are more simple than ever right now. And my kids have never enjoyed playing with their stuff more than how they feel right now. It's, it's just been wonderful. I actually have a video that I did where I shared with you my top tips and advice and strategies that I implement when it comes to my kids' toys from decluttering with them, like answering that question, do you declutter with your kids, to the toys that we like best and how we organize their toys and and just sharing some encouragement with you guys because I know kids' toys, oh my gosh, it can get so overwhelming sometimes. So that video will be linked in the description box if you guys want to check that out. It's a part of a series that I call Tips for Tidy where I've been going room by room or like category by category and sharing with you my best tips and advice for simplifying that category in your own home. And I try to make it as broad as possible to kind of fit in this very broad demographic that I have here on this channel, which I'm so, so grateful for. So I've gotten really good feedback back on that series and it just makes me very happy. I I love sharing my heart for simplifying my life, pursuing family minimalism, pursuing minimalism for myself, whether it's carrying a tiny purse (laughs) um, or, you know, just having a simple makeup routine to how I organize my kitchen and stuff like that or what my day-to-day life looks like as a mom. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for spending a little part of your day here with me on my channel. I know your time is valuable. So the fact that you sit here and, and hang out with me during my videos just means the world to me. So thanks so much for watching today's video and hanging out with me and I'll catch you later. Your rules don't apply to me, no. I blow away all the pressure to measure what don't need nothing. Oh.